What's up everybody, I'm Jasprit Singh, and one of the things that I've learned being the CEO and founder of Market Briefs, which is a financial newsletter company, is that people really, unfortunately, start caring about their money when times are bad. Because when times are good, people like to spend money and they don't really care about things going wrong, but then when times are bad, that's when people want to know, what do I do with my money to protect myself, usually when it's too late. We're in a strange time where our economy is changing and inflation is still hurting so many people and there are so many issues with the global global economy. So what I want to do today is talk about nine habits that keep so many people broke. That way you can stop doing these nine things right now. The first point that I want to talk about is you have just one stream of income because if you just rely on your one stream of income and this is the only income that you have and you're like the majority of people and you don't have any savings and you don't have any investments, well you're just one step away from being broke. Because now if you are to get fired or if your company were to go under and you get laid off or if you can't work because you get sick or because well, something happens in life and you now can't go into work to get paid, well now you no longer have the stream of income, but you still have all of your expenses. You still have to pay for your house bill, you still have to pay for your rent, your mortgage, you still gotta pay for your car, you still gotta pay for your gas, you still gotta pay for your groceries, your expenses don't go away, but your income is now gone. This is where now you don't want to just rely on this one stream of income. Now I'm not saying you gotta go out and find another job. You don't gotta go out and start a business. You don't gotta go out and start a side hustle, but you gotta start thinking a little bit different here. Where You're not just relying on your stream of income in order to survive, because what wealthy people do is they work. Now, if you're working for an income, that's fine. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take some of this income and invest this money into assets. That way now you have things that are now working to build you wealth because when you own assets you're putting your money to work when you go to work to get a paycheck you are physically working to get paid you're exchanging your hours for dollars but when you invest your money into assets now you're putting your money to work now your money is working to make you more money your money can work 24 hours a day seven days a week you can't you can work hard, you can sacrifice weekends, you can sacrifice evenings, but you still gotta sleep. You still gotta shower. You still gotta go to the bathroom. Now I know what you're thinking, but just breathe. I can work when I go to the bathroom. Sure, but your money doesn't need to do all that, which is why you need to start putting your money to work. And the only way that you can do that is if you don't spend all of your income. So now you need to spend less money and then take this money that you're not spending and put it to work. You need to invest that money. I'll talk about the different places and how you can invest that money a little bit later in this video, but this requires you now to start living below your means. The second point that I wanna talk about probably applies to 99% of America, and this is that you are product rich before you are actually rich. Now look, I'm gonna be completely honest here. I don't make these videos to get you to like me. I make these videos so you're better with your money, and the reality is if you drive a Benz, if you're wearing Gucci, if you're wearing Louis Vuitton, if you got Apple, AirPods, if you have any of these designer name band things, but you don't have a rental property, you don't have an investment portfolio, you don't have any stocks, your priorities are in the wrong place, and you're product rich, but you're not actually rich. Now, if you're watching this video, chances are you've already taken some steps to be better with your money, but just think about this for a second. I'm sure we all know somebody who has a lot of nice stuff. They earn a regular income, but they're driving a nice car. They have a nice home, they have that Rolex, they have a nice watch, they have all the nice things, they spend a lot of money, but they have nothing here. They show how rich they are, right? You're rich on the liability side. Liabilities are things that take money away from your pocket. Assets are things that put money in your pocket. You buy assets to make money, you buy liabilities to look like you're rich. So the interesting thing about these liabilities is you look rich, but these things that make you look rich are actually keeping you broke. Assets are things that you buy that make you look broke, but they're making you wealthy. When you go out and you start investing your money in the stock market, you don't look rich because you have nothing to show for it. You don't have a nice belt to show off. You don't have a nice car to show off. You don't have a big home. You just have a big portfolio. And when you buy a rental property, you have something that's paying you but you can't show it off the way that you can a Gucci belt. And so what happens? Well, when you own assets for the short term, you don't look rich. You actually look broker than you were before because now more of your money is going out to buy you these assets, which will make you wealthier in the future. However, when you're buying all these liabilities right now, you look rich today, but you have no money to actually make you real rich. What wealthy people do, and what I want you to start doing, because you can start this with like 10 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever you have, is that they always, 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 no matter what, they prioritize buying these before they're buying these. Take a little bit of money every month and make sure 
that every month from now on, no matter what you do this, whatever you want to start with, 10, 20, 30, $100, $1,000, it does not matter, but you have to start with something. But some money aside every single month, no matter what happens, and use that to buy these assets, whether it's stocks, whether it's real estate, whether it's something else, you need to start buying these assets before you spend all your money on these liabilities. Number three, you do not value your time. If you wanted to go out to the Gucci store and you wanted to buy this $3,000, you can see what it looks like, $3,000, ugly or beautiful handbag depending on who you are if you want to buy this three thousand dollar handbag how much is it going to cost you now you might say jaspreet you just said it three thousand dollars what do you mean maybe it's going to cost me a little bit of interest if you got to go finance it on your credit card but three grand is a cost well not necessarily because if you're getting paid twenty dollars an hour sure it'll cost you three thousand dollars but you're missing the point at twenty dollars an hour this purse isn't going to cost you three thousand dollars it's going to cost you a hundred and 50 hours of your life. And now you really gotta start valuing your time. How much is your time really worth? Are these things, these liabilities that you're buying, really worth the time that it costs to afford this item? Now there's nothing wrong with buying nice things. I know I make fun of Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all that. If you like it and you can afford it, I don't care, go out and buy it. But the key is you gotta be able to afford it because now if you're sacrificing your assets, if you're sacrificing the ability to become wealthy because now you wanna have the nice stuff today, well then you're doing something wrong and that is gonna keep you broke. The 2008 real estate crash happened when I was in high school and during that time I was working on this little teen party business and I was making a little bit of money here and there and I remember that when I made $1,000, I went out and I took the thousand dollars and I bought this really fancy studded up watch which looked really cool but today this watch is worthless. It made me look rich when I was in high school but it did nothing for me. But at the same time I remember I really liked Ford Mustangs but I couldn't buy a Ford Mustang. My dad said he wouldn't give me a Ford Mustang so I didn't have a Ford Mustang but I liked Fords and at that time I remember the Ford stock was right around two dollars a share. I didn't have thousands of dollars to go out and buy the Ford stock but I had a little bit of money maybe a hundred or a couple hundred bucks and I went out and I bought the Ford stock at two dollars a share. Now if I took that thousand dollars and I didn't buy that watch which made me look rich and instead I took that thousand dollars and I invested it into the Ford stock, well that money would have been worth a lot more today. I would have at least five or six times my money if I would have just bought that Ford stock instead of buying that watch. That watch today is worth nothing. The Ford stock if I had bought a thousand dollars would be worth at least $5,000 today. Number four, you are over relying on your 401k to be able to become wealthy or retire wealthy. Back in the day, retirement used to be what they call a three-legged stool. So I'm gonna try my Bob Ross right here and draw the stool where one leg would be your pension, one leg would be your social security, and one leg would be your investments. So what has happened over the last number of decades is the first Pensions have become a thing of the past. The only time you read about pensions is in history books or when you hear about pensions going bust or going bankrupt or having to cut their pensions. So pensions are not there anymore. If you are under the age of 45, do not plan on getting a pension. Then we have social security. Social security is this thing where now when you get paid a salary, you pay social security and your boss pays social security as well. So like I pay social security when I take out a salary and for all of my team members, my employees that I have, me, my company has to pay social security as well as my employees salaries, they have to pay social security as well. Now the interesting thing about social security and the unfortunate thing about social security is that the social security fund is drying up. So what that means is if you're under the age of 45 right now, the social security income that you're paying today isn't going to fund your social security checks, it's going to fund somebody else's social security. And so because social security is drying up, it's going to create a big problem with social security and why you don't want to rely on social security. And this is where everybody says, but the government can just print bigger social security checks. They can just do something else. And you're right. If nothing changes, unless the government raises their taxes for social security, they can just print bigger social security checks. However, that comes at a cost because when you print more money, it's what inflation is. It devalues your dollar, which causes the price of things to go up. So sure, the government can print you a $10,000 or a million dollar social security check for that matter. 
but when they print you these bigger social security checks what's also going to happen is your groceries are going to rise and your housing costs are going to rise you can never out print inflation and so you do not want to rely on social security and this is going to become a bigger and bigger problem as inflation stays a problem and as the social security fund continues to dry unless something major happens on the tax side for social security but again you don't want to rely on the government or the fed or even a random guy on youtube to take care of you which is why you do not want to rely on the social security which leaves the investment side now over the last couple of decades, we've seen the growth of the 401k. Now, the interesting thing is many people think that their 401k is what they need to retire off of, that your 401k will take care of you. However, even the founder of the 401k has come out openly and said that the 401k has become a monster and that the 401k has gone awry because so many people are now using their 401k as their sole retirement planning tool. It was never intended to be your sole investment plan. It was never intended to be your sole retirement plan. So if your 401k is your only form of investment, you need to start doing more ASAP. What that means on a more practical level is don't change anything that you're doing with a 401k yet. But what I want you to do is now take more of your income and put it aside and now start investing this money yourself. Maybe invest it into the stock market, maybe invest in real estate, maybe invest in cryptocurrency if that's what you believe, but have some more fundamental investments being the base of your portfolio and then start managing your own investments now if you have more money you can hire a money manager you can hire a financial advisor if you feel more comfortable doing that but i think it can be very beneficial for everybody to understand the basics of money management and investing your money now when you start investing your money either you're going to realize that you hate it or that you love it because if you hate it then yeah you know have somebody else do something else with their money that way you're not the one that's dealing with the money because if you're going to lose all your money let somebody else manage it for you. But if you enjoy it, then you can start asking yourself, do you want to be more involved with investments or are you okay with your current investment portfolio and your investment possibilities? I'm an investor, so I don't use a 401k. I don't use an IRA. I invest my money myself outside of these government sponsored entities, these retirement funds, because I can get better returns. I have more investment options. I have more freedom and I have more control over my money. And I also have better tax breaks by investing my money myself outside of these entities. Now, again, this takes more work, more education, more time on my end, but you gotta figure out what's right for you. The 401k, the IRA, these are great for the average person and the average investor. However, you want to understand the value that they provide and you don't want to just throw all of your money into here and think that it's enough. You want to make sure that you're investing your money yourself, which is where now you gotta start doing your research. Like at the very least, if you wanna start investing in stocks, if you don't wanna start picking stocks, you can consider investing in index funds or ETFs. These now are not individual companies, but rather they are a basket of companies. For example, the S&P 500 is a group of the biggest 500 companies on the stock market. Now, instead of you going out and individually investing in all 500 of these companies, you can invest in an index fund or an ETF that give you exposure to all 500 of these companies. So now you invest in this one thing, which is giving you exposure to the biggest 500 companies on the stock market. So you're essentially investing your money into the companies that make America, America. And so if you believe in the future of the American economy, it's a very simple and accessible way for you to start investing without spending a whole bunch of time. And you don't even need a lot of money. Like you can start with as little as $100. Now, if you do want some more guidance on how do you invest your money, how do you do that research, how do you do that type of fundamental analysis, you can check out Market Insiders. It's an investing education education app that I created where every week you get access to stock market, real estate, and cryptocurrency coaching. So if you're looking for some extra guidance, you can try out Market Insiders for free with a 10-day trial. So if you want to try out Market Insiders for free, I'll put the link to how you can do that down in the description below. The fifth habit that you want to break, and this also applies to the vast majority of people, is that your money has no job. Your money has no plan because the financial statement for the majority of people looks like this. You make an income and then you pay for your expenses. And then after you pay for your expenses, you wonder where all your money went. I want you to break out of this and create a job for every dollar that you earn. The simplest way that you can do this, and you can create your own version of this, this is just a simple way for you to start, is to follow something like my 75, 15, 10 plan, which says that from now on, every dollar that you earn is gonna flow through this funnel. And this funnel says that 75 cents of every dollar that you earn is the maximum that you can spend. 15 cents out of every dollar that you earn from now on is the minimum that you are going to invest. And 10 cents out of every dollar that you earn from now on is the minimum that you save. 
Now, once you start doing this, you have created a system for your money and you can automate this. Like you can create multiple different bank accounts. And now you have a bank account for your checkings or spending money. You have a bank account for your investment cash. Maybe this money is automatically invested. Maybe this money is sitting there waiting to be invested, just depending on what it is that you want to do. And then you have a separate bank account for your savings. And now what you can do is you create three different bank accounts and you can create an automatic withdrawal. So now anytime you get paid, money automatically leaves goes into the different bank accounts. This way, when Amazon has a sale on big screen TVs, you don't accidentally use your investment money or your savings money on that TV. The one thing that I wanna mention about this is that your savings have to be done strategically because anytime you are in a high inflationary environment, your savings are losing value to inflation. And so what you wanna do now is you don't wanna just save your money to save it. You don't wanna save your money forever. You wanna save your money strategically. And what that means is you wanna create an emergency fund. And this could be anywhere between three months worth of expenses and a year's worth of expenses, depending on what your risk tolerance is. And once you save that savings fund, you don't save any more money because now you have built the savings fund and now you only save money if one for emergencies, but you save money for a big purchase or you save money for an investment. If you're not saving money for one of these three reasons, you should not be saving this money instead you should be putting it here for your investments. That way now you're spending no more than 75% of every dollar that you earn, but you're investing a quarter of every dollar that you earn. And now no matter how much your income is, whether there's 40 grand a year or 400 grand a year, your system is gonna scale with you. Number six, you are financing a car that you cannot afford. At the time of re-recording this video, the average car payment for a new car is $644 a month in America. And if you have a used car, the average payment on that is $488 a month. Now, the person who says it the best is Dave Ramsey because what he says is act your wage. And if you are now financing a car, that means that you have bought a depreciating liability, a liability that's now losing value and you're paying interest on something that's losing value. Now, the real cost of a car isn't just your monthly payment. It's the lost opportunity of what you could have done with this money. So uh, let's just take the average of this. So the average of this is $566 a month. If you did not have a car payment now, and you took this $566 a month, and now you are investing it, and you can get a 7% return on your money over the long term. So we're not talking about great returns, just average returns over the long term. And this does not mean that you have to get 7% every year, just over the long term, which is below the average stock market, below the average real estate return. Over the next 45 years, if you start this when you're 21, you will have over $2 million dollars versus if you just kept buying cars, you got a car which is worth whatever a car is worth, right? There's a lot of money to be made if you just invest this money. And if you can get a better return on your money, if you can get a 10% return on your money, which is closer to the long-term average. So now instead of having this car payment, you're gonna invest this money into whatever you want. Instead of paying $566 a month for your car, you're gonna be investing this money. Well, now you're gonna have over $5 million, actually close to $6 million if you can invest this money instead and get a 10% return on your money. Now, what you might be thinking is just breathe. I still need a car. What do you mean? How am I supposed to get out of life without a car payment? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I get it, you need a car. But do you really need a $50,000 Benz right now? Instead of having this car payment, go out and sell your car and then buy a used but good working condition car with cash drive that around and then invest the difference. And if you think it's not possible, well, I'll tell you that it is because the first time I made a million dollars in a year, in a year, I was driving a car that was valued appraised at right around $500. And today, guess what? I'm still driving that car that's worth around $500. The reason why is because I understand the value of this. I'm investing heavily back into myself and my business market briefs. Now, to be honest, I probably will go out and buy a nicer car sometime soon, but right now I still have employees that drive better cars than I do. And the reason why is because I want to invest this money aggressively. And guess what? When you have this more expensive car, guess what? Your insurance is a lot higher. You gotta pay for that premium gas. You gotta pay for all these extra fees versus when you have a car that's a little bit more beat up, that's used, but in good working condition. You don't want a car that has a ton of maintenance issues, but you got a good working condition car your fees are also a lot less and now you have more money to invest for your future. And you gotta decide what is it you want. 
Do you want that Benz so you look rich now? Or do you want that beat up car that way you can actually become rich and afford that Benz without worrying about the cost? Seventh, you're not tracking your money. In business, what we say is if you can't track it, you can't optimize it. And in your personal finances, it works the exact same way. If you don't know where your money is going or where your money is coming from, it's gonna be very hard for you to optimize it. And this one doesn't have to be very hard. Instead, what I want you to do and take a piece of paper, take an Excel sheet, do whatever you gotta do. I mean, just keep it as simple as you want. I use Google Excel sheets, Google Sheets, whatever they're called, Google Sheets. Uh, but it's very simple. Just write down on one side your income. Write down how much money you made. If you have multiple different streams of income, you have a business, you have investments, write them all down. Then below that, write your expenses. Now, in the beginning, this is going to take you a little bit of time because now you're going to go through your credit card statements, you're going to go through your bank statements, you're going to go through your debit card statements, and you're going to have to see where your money is going. Now, the newer credit cards, the newer banks are going to make it a lot easier because they'll categorize it for you. They'll show you how much money is spent on food. You'll see how much money is spent on your housing. You'll see how much money is spent on gas. You'll see how much money is spent on groceries. Now, I'll start breaking it down and write all the different expenses that you have. Did you have charity costs that you paid? Did you give money away? Did you, whatever you did with your money, write all of your expenses here. And now when you're looking at this, it's like a report card for yourself. And this can be very hard to do because, you know, when you're in school, you don't like getting your report card back, but now you have to grade yourself. And you wanna be honest because the more honest you are, the better that you're gonna be able to optimize this. And as soon as you look at this, you don't even gotta have any sort of financial education. You are immediately gonna understand where your money is going and you will immediately be able to find ways for you to optimize your money significantly faster. You might find subscriptions that you didn't even know that you had. You might be able to save a couple hundred dollars there a month without even doing anything because you didn't realize that you kept paying for something that you didn't use. And now you're gonna see, oh my God, how much money am I spending at restaurants? Oh my God, how much money am I spending on these random things that I didn't need? And now you can start cutting back on the things that we're not that important. Now, of course, cutting back is never fun, but it's one aspect to being able to live bigger because now once you understand how to live below your means, when you start earning more money, when you start focusing on how to increase the income, now you can use your income more effectively because you know how to spend your money. If you're just increasing your income without any idea of how to control your spending, it's not gonna do you any good. And this is what happens to so many people is they always say, oh my God, if I just made some more money, my financial problems would be better. My money problems would be all solved. And then what happens? You work harder for a raise, a bonus, a promotion, and now your income goes up and then boop, your expenses suddenly go up as well. So just once a month, it doesn't gotta take very long. The first time it's gonna take you the longest, but after that, it won't take you more than an hour to do this. Just take a piece of paper, a Google sheet, an Excel sheet, whatever you wanna use, write down your income, write down your expenses, and just track where your money is going. That way you can see where your money is going, and then when you wanna make changes, you can actually apply them and see if you're working towards your goals or not. Number eight, you are spending money based off of things that you can buy instead of things that you can afford. Now. This is becoming very confused in our definition with all the new fintechs, financial technologies out there because you could pretty much buy whatever you want. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank account nowadays because either you can put it on your credit card and if you don't have a credit card, you can just buy now, pay later. These are very fast growing industries and the reason why is because we live in this consumerism culture where, hey, I wanna buy this nice $3,000 belt, I wanna buy this new $3,000 purse from Gucci, Louis Vuitton, whatever, but I don't got three grand but all my friends have it. So why do I have to wait until I actually have the money to afford it? Why do I have to wait until I can actually afford it when I can just buy it now? See, it's very easy to buy things, but it's very different to be able to afford something. But the difference is when you can afford something, you don't gotta worry about the price. It doesn't bother you later. When you buy something that you can't afford, well, yeah, you got it today, but now tomorrow you're gonna be stressing about the price. So now practically, what does this mean? Well, for one, no more financing anything that does not put money in your pocket. No more financing your vacations. No more financing the nice luxury stuff. No more financing anything that isn't directly gonna put money in your pocket. The only exception here will be the home that you live in. If you wanna finance your home, fine but we're not talking about your home here. We're talking about the other things, your clothes, the designer stuff, no more financing that. And second now, when you wanna go out and buy something, no more of the net zero thinking. The majority of people have this net zero mindset where they think, oh, if I have 10 grand, I can afford this nice vacation. Well, yeah, you can buy it. And sure, you don't need to go into debt to buy it, but that doesn't mean that you can afford it because now if you're going down to zero, the net zero thinking, well, now you have nothing else. And so what you can do here is follow my rule of five. If you can't buy five of them, you can't afford one of them. If you are talking about buying your liabilities, the things that you don't need to survive, 
follow my rule of five that way now you're not overspending and you're not spending all of your money to buy things that you can't actually afford and number nine you're not investing your time or money to learn about money look i have friends who are doctors they're earning big salaries but they're broke they have nothing to show for it they have very little savings they have little to no investments but i also have friends that are working regular jobs regular incomes who have multiple six-figure investment portfolios and i know this because they talk to me about it and they show me that and the difference between this person making a regular income and the person making $400,000 a year as a doctor now isn't how much money that they're making, it's what they do with the money that they're making and it all comes down to learning about money. It does not matter what degree you have, if you're not willing to learn about money, it's gonna be very difficult for you to become wealthy and this means now you have to go out of your way to start learning about money. And this is hard because we're never taught about money in school. We're never taught to learn about money. But if you want to become wealthy, you have to be one of the people that's investing your time, investing your money to learn about money. Now, YouTube makes it much easier because now you can watch these YouTube videos for free, but then you can also read books, take classes, invest in your own financial education. You have to always be willing to learn because that's how you're gonna get better. And you have to be willing to try be willing to make mistakes because those mistakes are how you learn and it's how you will learn to be better with your money. And unfortunately, you know, money is still a taboo topic. Most people don't want to talk about money, right? And the reason why it's such a taboo topic is because many of us are insecure about our money. However, this is where now you got to go out of your way to start learning about money, that way you can be better with your money, that way you can take better care of yourself, take better care of your family, and take better care of your community. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see the biggest lies that keep so many people poor, I already made a video covering that and you can watch that video by clicking this button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. If you make a million dollars as an investor, guess what? You get to keep more than $700,000. Between 700 and 800 